Happy New Year, everyone. With the turning of the calendar, let's talk about the top five geologic stories for Yellowstone in 2025. Here we go. Number five, rumors. And I'm not talking about the Fleetwood Mac album. It was a year of internet rumors, mostly related to animals leaving the park. This pops up every few years in Yellowstone. This past year, it started as a bunch of sort of internet jokes. One of them even claimed that bears were blocking the entrances, standing shoulder to shoulder and holding crudely drawn signs. But in the retelling, it got a little bit more serious and suddenly there were these worries that animals were fleeing the park ahead of some impending disaster. Of course, not true. If you ever see things like that and have questions or wonder about it, feel free to drop us a line. We're always happy to talk Yellowstone. Number four, hydrothermal activity. We all know Yellowstone is an incredibly dynamic place. Features turn on, they turn off. 2025 was no different. In 2024, a feature in the Roadside Springs area between Mammoth and Norris turned on and then turned off by the end of the year. In 2025, it turned on again, sending a nice loud steam plume into the air. We saw the development of a new blue water pool at Norris Geyser Basin late 2024 into 2025, and there was a new feature that started bubbling near Echinus Geyser. When we look at the overall changes in Yellowstone, the overall heat that's emitted, it's been on par with what's been going on in previous years. We know this from satellite data and from looking at river chemistry. So overall, no changes, but Yellowstone hydrothermal features are being their dynamic selves. Number three, earthquakes and ground deformation. Yellowstone is an extremely active place seismically. Typically, there's about 1,500 to 2,500 located earthquakes every year, most very small. In 2025, there were 1,136 events. That's on par with last year. And the month of December, there were just 79 earthquakes. So in terms of seismicity, Yellowstone is sort of at background levels, maybe even a little bit low. In terms of ground deformation, 2025 has been a pretty interesting year. Looking at satellite radar data and GPS data, it appears that in July, an area that was to the south of Norris Geyser Basin, right on the North Caldera Rim, started to uplift. Now this is an area of known uplift from the past, from 1996 to 2004, the area went up by many centimeters, several inches. Since July, the area has popped up by two or three centimeters or so. That's just about an inch or a little bit less. It started in July when most of the seasonal signals in Yellowstone start, but it persisted through the end of the year. So it may be that we're seeing a transition to a new form of deformation in this area. The same might be true in the caldera, which has been subsiding since 2015, but again with those summertime pauses. But as of the end of 2025, the summertime pause of the year hasn't really stopped and we're seeing a slight amount of uplift. This is not unusual for Yellowstone. The caldera rises and falls almost like the ground is breathing. From 2004 to 2009, and again from 2014 to 2015, we saw uplift in the caldera. So Yellowstone deformation being its interesting dynamic self. Number two, Steamboat Geyser, the tallest active geyser in the world. Now like a lot of geysers in Yellowstone, Steamboat goes through phases, sometimes being not very active, years or decades with no eruptions, other times being very active. And since 2018, we've been one of those very active phases. In that year, there were 32 eruptions, a new record. It broke that record in 2019 and 2020 with 48 eruptions each year. But since that time, the activity has been declining. And in 2025, there were just three eruptions in February and April. And on December 31st, just after 10 p.m., Steamboat trying to send 2025 out with a bang. What will 2026 hold? Probably continuing declining activity as this phase of activity at the geyser comes to an end. And finally, number one, Biscuit Basin. This was the site of the hydrothermal explosion that occurred back in July of 2024. Well, in 2025, we started installing more monitoring equipment in the area, including a webcam that recorded video. And also in late July, we were able to put in a GPS station, a seismic station, and an acoustic monitoring station. And looking at all of this data together, we can see that the black diamond pool, that was the source of the big explosion, remains very active. It has these sporadic eruptions that send muddy water up 30, 40 feet or so. It can have very small events, only sending things up a foot or so. It can even have these events that sort of just look like small changes in the level of the pool, but that still have a very strong seismic and acoustic signature. So Black Diamond remains active, and we're learning an awful lot about how that system is working, thanks to all this new monitoring. There you have it, top five geological stories for Yellowstone in 2025. No animals are not fleeing the park. Hydrothermal activity remains incredibly dynamic. 
Earthquake activity, sort of on the low end of average, but some interesting deformation. Steamboat Geyser continues to decline in terms of numbers of eruptions every year. And Black Diamond Pool continues to be very active with several sporadic eruptions spaced throughout the year, many of which were caught by new monitoring equipment. What will 2026 hold? Doubtless it's going to be really interesting, and if you'd like to follow along with that activity, you can check out Caldera Chronicles, our weekly article about some aspect of Yellowstone geology, and we also put out monthly text and video updates. And if you have any questions, drop us a line. Our email address is yvowebteam, all one word, at usgs.gov, or you can leave a comment on any of our social media channels. Stay safe, stay healthy, happy new year, happy 2026, and we will see you next time. Bye-bye.